Phil McGraw is the king of daytime television and was even honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame recently. His show debuted in 2002 and is currently in its 18th season, and in all those years he has welcomed troubled guests on his show many a time. From raging alcoholics to rebellious teenagers, here are 10 wild Dr. Phil guests. Admitting you have a problem is the first step towards overcoming it. But despite her kids calling her out on her excessive drinking, Tracy and her boyfriend were convinced that she was not an alcoholic since she didn't start drinking until the afternoon, except on Sundays. Tracy felt like it was finally her time to live a little after caring for her children all her life, and she didn't understand why her children were pushing her away and keeping her grandkids from her. I know that I can quit drinking because it's all a choice for me, and I've went days and days without drinking. Her kids on the other hand, claimed that Tracy's drinking had spiraled out of control since she had started dating her new boyfriend and they simply didn't feel comfortable letting her see their children. With Tracy claiming that this only made her want to drink more because she was trying to numb the way her kids made her feel, this family was clearly caught in a vicious circle and Dr. Phil was their only way out. I don't know how to deal with the pain that my kids put me through, so... Okay. No, no, actually you do. You're self-medicating. Right? In February 2019, Dr. Phil welcomed a man on his show who was convinced that he was a real-life Batman. Giovanni called himself Goose Wayne Batman and claimed he was dedicated to bringing people justice. I'm not crazy, I'm not delusional. I'm Batman. The show host saw things a little differently though and wondered whether his guest was delusional or suffering from a delusional disorder. Goose would not only run around in a Batman suit and mask most of the time, but would also have black around his eyes whenever he didn't wear the costume, including on date nights with his fiancée Callan, on which they would understandably always stay in. When Dr. Phil tried to offer Goose to get an evaluation at a top psychiatric and medical evaluation center, his guest was rather hesitant, talking about having to look at his scheduling despite not having an actual job. I would really have to take a step back and, and look at my scheduling. Um, okay. There you have your answer. And it seemed like it was still a long way for Dr. Phil to save Callan from becoming Mrs. Batman. While Alyssa's story was tragic after she had lost her husband following a traumatic head injury, her way of coping with her grief was destroying her whole family. After her husband had fallen off a golf cart onto the back of his head, he was in an induced coma for a month but seemed okay when he woke up and even started talking again. Sadly, a few months later, things got worse again with his brain starting to swell again and he eventually passed away, leaving Alyssa devastated. While she admitted that she had started drinking the day he died and now drank every night to cope with the pain, she didn't believe she was an alcoholic. Her friends and family on the other side said that her drinking and partying was out of control and that she brought home different men all the time, despite two of her kids still living at home with her. When Dr. Phil showed videos of Alyssa's rather unusual interactions with the show's staff, she did feel ashamed of her behavior, especially since her 11-year-old son was present in one of the videos. If you could just stop touching me, that'd be awesome, though. I can't hear you loud and clear, tempor, big chicken. However, despite being embarrassed about hugging and wrestling the staff members, Alyssa was still making excuses for her strange and inappropriate behavior in the videos as well as on the other occasions and made not only her kids and the audience in the studio cover their faces in shame. 21-year-old Ashlyn's life was pretty wild when she appeared on Dr. Phil. According to her mom Pam and her sister Grace, Ashlyn partied a lot and worked as a stripper instead of caring for her 14-month-old son. They claimed Ashlyn was a bad mom who neglected her son and didn't take any responsibility. Ashlyn is one of the most irresponsible people I've ever met. Ashlyn would rather party than spend time with her child. Ashlyn was convinced that she was a good mom, however, saying that she had a tight bond with her son. Dr. Dr. Phil eventually managed to crack his guest shell, however, getting Ashlyn to admit that she didn't actually like what her life had become and acknowledge that she needed to make a lot of changes. You know as well as I do, this is not leading to anything good long term. I do know that. So that means you need a new plan. 
Many teenage girls fantasize about marrying their favorite singer one day, but Jenna was actually a grown woman who was married and a mother of two when she became obsessed with the idea of being with country singer Kip Moore. After he had apparently made eye contact with her while singing his song Hey Pretty Girl, Jenna had decided to leave her husband to run off with Kip Moore. During a meet and greet, she had the singer sign her back and later tattooed the signature on her body. She had sent him a pizza with a love note and her number inside, as well as written him a 12 page love letter. Understandably, her husband Travis called her delusional and revealed that Jenna had spent their mortgage money on Kit Moore tickets, before sending him a message after the concert, saying she wanted to divorce him to be with Kip. The show had obviously contacted the country singer, who gave a statement that basically read that he had many crazy and delusional fans like her who built up a fantasy in their heads based on the fact that he had made eye contact during a concert or a meet and greet when he was just trying to be a nice guy and make himself accessible to his fans. Although Jenna claimed that she was well aware of that and didn't have any illusions about being with Kip, the fact that she had written Mrs. Kip Moore on her windshield and Marry Me Kip on the rear window suggested otherwise. Order With Marry until... Me Kip Moore painted on the back of your no. window? What are you, 12? No. No. 13-year-old Danielle Bregali is perhaps the most famous non-celebrity guest in Dr. Phil history, as her appearance was so absurd that she almost instantly became a meme. The teenage girl had been brought to the show by her mother, who was at her wit's end with her daughter's disrespectful and reckless behavior, but most of the episode made for some weird entertainment. At times, Dr. Phil and the audience needed Danielle's mother to translate her daughter's strange slang into English, but the most infamous moment of the show was when the girl basically challenged the audience to a fight by shouting, Catch me outside, how about that? Catch me outside, how about that? Huh? Catch me outside, how about that? Catch you outside? What does that mean? What I just say. Her appearance turned her into an internet star and even helped her launch a rap career, but it was pretty cringy to watch Dr. Phil talk to Danielle's mother about her daughter like she wasn't there or was just a toddler who didn't really understand what the grown-ups were talking about. Lori and Patrick came to Dr. Phil seeking help with their 25-year-old son Steven, whose rage was apparently so out of control that they were afraid he might kill them eventually. They had called the police over Steven's extreme anger outbursts on more than one occasion, and Dr. Phil was pretty confused as to why Lori and Patrick even allowed their grown son to continue to stay at their house and abuse them, or even threaten to shoot them in the head if they don't give him $20 for gas. The show host not only accused Steven of not taking full responsibility responsibility of his actions, but he also called his parents out for being more concerned about easing their guilt by keeping him around so they would at least know where he was, instead of making the necessary decisions which would actually help him. You have put your emotional agenda ahead of his well-being. You are doing it because it makes you feel better because you at least know where he is. Dr. Phil has sent many teenagers to a place called Turnabout Ranch over the years, a place that specializes in working with oppositional, manipulative, and rebellious people. Turnabout is actually a real working ranch where the teenagers are taught values to create lasting change by combining therapy and academics as well as ranch chores and has helped a lot of teens over the years, but getting them there is not always easy. When 14-year-old Michelle first heard Dr. Phil mentioning the ranch, she immediately said that that she wouldn't go, while her parents had no doubts about their decision of sending her there. After filming, the teenager had a screaming fit backstage while Dr. Phil's people tried to convince her that the ranch was the best option for her and her parents. Get me the out of this room. I'm not getting sent the away. Get me, get me out. Get me, me out. Get me out. Get me out. Get me out. After yelling that they couldn't force her to do anything she didn't want to do, and eventually putting her fingers in her ears while yelling and cursing, Michelle finally agreed to go with Dr. Phil's people, who took her straight to the ranch without going home first, in order to avoid her trying to run away. 
Probably one of the most memorable characters on the Dr. Phil show was the man who was born as Hansel Marion de Bartolo III, but had legally changed his name to Sexy Vegan and even tattooed this name on his forehead and chest in Skin Candy Vegan Tattoo Ink. This blue haired guy walked around wearing speedos and always carried a mirror, had no eyebrows but a nasty attitude, and his own theme song. Sexy Vegan was convinced that his mother should support him with his dead father's inheritance because he was simply too beautiful for a job. And as if this story wasn't enough to get the show some good ratings, Dr. Phil had eventually escorted him out by security, but only after he had sung his theme song. I am the beautiful vegan messiah told everyone that he had a 9.9 .9 out of 10 rating after 327 women rated him and asked his mother, what's your f***ing talent, you ugly piece of before doing a moonwalk across the stage. What's your talent, you ugly piece of Okay, stop. Hey, hey, look at me. Let's look see at your me. talent. No, huh? hey, hey, hey. There have been a number of out of control teens on the show, but 17 year old Malia was surely one of the most memorable ones. Malia's parents, Mark and Melissa, said she dropped out of school after the sixth grade, started running away and using street drugs, and became involved with a much older man at age 15. Following an allegedly violent encounter and the alleged shooting of an elderly neighbor in the leg, Malia's 35 year old boyfriend, Charles Jackson, was apprehended by Oregon police and faced charges for attempting attempted murder, among others. On the show, Malia said she wanted to come home, but for her parents that was not an option at the time, because according to her mother, Malia would just bring chaos to their home and suck the life out of her. Malia, on the other hand, felt like she was simply not given enough attention, and even though it was obvious that she needed to work on herself, Dr. Phil also pointed out that this was more of a family issue as opposed to being just a Malia issue. Thank you for checking this video out and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again thank you for watching and see you next time.